Illiteracy is defined as the inability to read and write, and it affects all areas of life. During the COVID-19 pandemic, illiteracy has reached crisis levels. Joining us now, we have Malcolm Mitchell. He was an All-American football player in high school, one of the top 10 receivers of all time at the University of Georgia, and even has a Super Bowl ring from his time with the New England Patriots. As if those accolades weren't enough, he is also a two-time author and a literacy expert who is here to share his love of reading, as well as some tips to help alleviate the illiteracy crisis. Welcome, Malcolm. No, thank you for having me. Of course. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be on here. Maybe share a little bit of my story and some resources that I think will be helpful for communities. Absolutely. Now, can you tell us how your love of reading grew and why this cause is so important to you? Yeah, I grew up in Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, small community. Some would define it as an under-resourced community. And I did what most kids in my neighborhood did. I played football and did not fully understand the importance of education. But it's once I got to the University of Georgia that I was able to look around and come to a couple conclusions. And that's uh, that being an athlete was cool. Only being an athlete was not so cool. I also understood if I gave my brain the same amount of attention that I was giving my body as an athlete, it would take me to similar places. And that if I wanted to be the best Malcolm that I could be, I needed to read. And I went on that journey and it was difficult, uh, but I was able to persist and really understand the benefits that reading plays in our lives. And that's when it became important for me to share that message with my community. I love it. That's such a great message that if you fuel your brain the same way you fuel your body, you'll excel in both areas. Now, how has the COVID-19 crisis impacted early reading education and how are schools addressing this issue? Yeah, it's it's one thing we have to realize and that I realized on my journey that reading is tough. <laughs> it is hard. It's not natural. It's something that has to be learned and taught and it must start with a firm foundation. Well, COVID-19 kind of disrupted the process of building that foundation to learn upon. So we see the achievement gap widening even more so than before and doing it doing so rapidly. But uh, thankfully, we have free resources that have uh, come about like coxcampus.org that provide opportunities for teachers to empower their students, uh, for families to learn together, and for kids to have a place where they can learn, play, and excel. Right. It's so cool that Cox is giving us these sources that we can use. Now, are there any examples of parents or teachers that have been successful in this unique and stressful environment that we have going on right now? Yes. Usually the examples uh, that I receive uh, come from families that are reading together, uh, learning together and being curious together and playing together. I think it's the combination of all those things that give a child the confidence and courage to go off and learn on their own, which is important for them to have the skills to do so. You know, as much as we say we're at home, well, we still have jobs that we have to do to provide for our families. So making sure that children have a firm foundation to go off and do those things on their own is important. Absolutely. It's definitely really important. Now, do you have tips for families to make working and learning from home easier? I know that's something that's really hard for me with a baby and working. Yeah. yeah one word that we don't hear that much, uh, especially today is fun. Have fun. Uh, have fun in the learning process. Have fun reading together. Have fun being curious together. And just really infuse this happiness around that learning process. Therefore, um, your children or students will begin to appreciate, accept, and move in that direction as well. Absolutely. Now, where can parents and teachers both go to get more information and these resources? CoxCampus.org is where I recommend you go. Right now, they have over 150,000 members, all 50 states. Um, in 68 countries. So I would say that's a safe place to find some robust information uh, and uh, tools. I also encourage you to visit my foundation's website, readwithmalcolm.com, and you can learn a bit more about what I'm doing to help in this process as well. 
Amazing. Well, Malcolm, it has been a pleasure speaking to you today and thank you so much for everything you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate you and thank you for your time. Miss Hampton Roads' hottest lifestyle and entertainment show, Living 757. 